I get a lot of mixed feedback on car videos, so let me just apologize to you. I do use this external mic here just to kind of cut out some of the background noise, but I've really been on the go lately, so this is it. I just wanted to have a little quick conversation with you, and it's just happened to be all the time I had today. <laughs> Last week, while we were getting to know each other a little better, which was so much fun, I really enjoyed that, by the way. One of the things that came up was um, that I'm a dog lover or an animal lover, and that was a fact that surprised some people who had known me online in other ways and, and just didn't really realize how much I was into my dogs. So I thought we would talk about that a little bit today because it's not actually true. I'm not really an animal lover or even a dog lover. So there's a whole story behind why I have a Great Dane and why I foster Great Danes, but it's really a rather new aspect to my life. It started about two years ago, just over two years ago, actually. And prior to that, I'd never had a pet as an adult. You know, I was a single mom with two children. I did good to keep house plants alive. <laughs> so I always thought, you know, I just didn't really need the added responsibility of a pet. So like I said, this all started just over two years ago. And I went to this lady's house. We stopped by for a visit and she had dogs. She was a dog person, right? So I walk in and I'm immediately a little bit uncomfortable because she has three or four dogs, maybe just three, but they were rather large dogs. And I was just a little uncomfortable. I've always been kind of uncomfortable around animals. So anyway, one of the dogs that she had was a Great Dane that she had just rescued and he was very old. And when I sat down in a chair there in the living room, this Great Dane across the coffee table sat down on the love seat. And I mean to tell you that he sat down like a person. You know, he just like plopped his butt down on the love seat and his feet were still on the floor in front of him. And he just looked at me. And he was so big that he was really like almost halfway to me from the love seat because he was just, you know, sitting his butt on the love seat and the rest was pointing towards me. And he just looked at me like the whole time. And I absolutely, completely fell in love. I can't even explain it. You know, I just looked at this Dane straight in the face and I thought, I could so steal you right here, right now and take you home with me forever. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it was. I just fell in love. And so I left there and decided I was going to get a Great Dane. And I looked everywhere. Of course, you start with the basic stuff, right? So I looked on the local websites like localsalesnetwork.com, that's lsn.com now, I think. And I looked on Craigslist, of course, in the local areas. And I found a few. And really, you know, with the economy the way that it is and such, Danes are very expensive to feed. And so there are a lot of rescues right now, and there are a lot of people trying to rehome their Danes to good homes. So I was on Craigslist and beautiful picture of a beautiful Dane and I thought I'm gonna go you know check this out but it was you know some guy who lived way out in the middle of nowhere like literally and um, was married supposedly but you know and everything was fine on the phone and I scheduled the appointment and blah 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 but then I got to thinking about it and I thought you know if I wanted to lure some crazy woman out to my house in the middle of nowhere, this would be a great pretense. <laughs> right? So I decided that really wasn't the way to go. Fortunately, in all my online searches, I found damesfordanes.org, and I've mentioned them before. So I found them, got connected with them, and uh, started looking around at, at the Danes that were up for adoption, and so I found one, and her name was Lola. Lola was kind of short for a Dane, but she was, you know, really built thick, and um, she was a Merle, a Blue Merle, beautiful. She was all the way in East Tennessee, so it was like a four-hour drive one way, almost eight hours round trip, and I just really wasn't sure how I felt about the concept. Again, you know, I'd never had a dog, and this is a very large dog, okay, <laughs> and so really just wasn't sure how I felt about the whole thing, but at any rate, made the trip to just go meet her and see. And when I got there, I didn't really feel anything. I was thinking, this is such a big mistake. I mean, this is a huge dog. I don't have any experience. I don't feel anything. Like, I didn't immediately think, oh, I'm so in love with you. I want to take you home with me. I'm not one of those people. So, um, I was encouraged to go ahead and give it a try, and I did. Well, it turned out that Lola and I really bonded, and I just really enjoyed her. She was a great walker, and so her and I would go walk in the trails, we'd walk down the river, we'd take the fishermen's trails. We just had such a good time together. Unfortunately, 
She didn't like my oldest child, my firstborn, my only son, at all. So we tried a few different things and he was willing to work with her. But every time I left the room, she'd have him cornered, literally, like up in a corner. So we tried a few different things. For example, he was the only one that got to give her this special treat. So every time he would come in the door, he would give her this treat. And it seemed like things might go okay until the day that she took him down by the shoulder. And mind you, Lola never even got up. She was laying down when she did it, but she took my grown son down by the shoulder. So it was just something about him specifically that sparked a fear aggression in her, whether it was his look or his character or, you know, who knows why. So that didn't work out. Fortunately, Lola found a great home with a couple that didn't have children. So it worked out really good. So I continued to look and the damesfordames.org organization introduced me to Slim. And Slim was just a pup. He was one year old. And I didn't want a boy dame. <laughs> And he was, you know, kind of small, kind of short, and so I call him a runt. But anyway, I took both the kids with me that time to meet Slim, just to make sure that there wasn't going to be an issue right off the bat. And the kids really liked him, and he really liked the kids. We brought him home with us, and of course I adopted him. Now, it didn't just go really great right off the bat. There was a big phase there of transition for both of us, Slim and I both, getting used to each other, getting to know each other, figuring each other out. And during the course of the first six or eight months that I had Slim, I had so many people tell me that I really shouldn't have Slim. Um, my chiropractor, for example, said I really needed to trade him in for a small poodle. <laughs> he was so energetic, and he was really still such a puppy. And so um, when I would take him for a walk, let me tell you, Slim is an agile pup. Like, he is all muscle. So if a squirrel runs by, or a chubby puppy, or a poodle, or anything really, he's gone. So at first I just had him on a regular leash. I didn't know that there were other options because not being a dog person, you know, I was pretty ignorant really. So he threw me a couple of times accidentally, um, sprained my ankle pretty bad, which I still suffer with from time to time. But um, we had a few little incidents like that, just getting to know each other, getting each other figured out. So, but then we really started to communicate with each other. We started to understand each other and uh, we started to kind of get a routine down. And I fell madly in love with him. I really started to understand dog love and what it is people love about dogs. Slim is the most loyal, loving, affectionate, caring thing living thing I have ever known in my life. So as opportunities came up within the organization to foster other Danes, when I was available to do it, when I had the time and the energy and stuff, I would foster for the organization simply because I was so grateful to have been connected with Slim. He is like the perfect pet. He's added so much to my life. I really wanted to be able to give back and help other Danes, you know, find good forever homes like Slim and I. So I fostered a few times and uh, both of them were females. I like female Danes. The first one I fostered was Chloe. And Chloe was just a puppy and I had her for just a week before she got homed, which was great. That was good news. The second one that I fostered was Mercy. And Mercy was a brindle. She was gorgeous. And I had Mercy the longest, actually. I think I had her for several months. But Mercy really had a thing as alpha female with me specifically. So she was constantly battling me for position of alpha female in the house. It was quite an interesting dynamic and Slim never really took to her, but she was a beautiful day and ultimately found a wonderful home. And so then of course there's Myla who you can see here in the back. And Myla is the fifth Dane I've had in the house because there was Lola and Slim and Mercy and Chloe and now Myla. So Myla's the fifth Dane I've had in the house. And Myla's been with me for almost six weeks now. And I'll admit, I have kind of considered having two Danes, like adopting a second Dane. And the criteria, of course, I would want a female and I would want her to match Slim. So black and white would be a must, not necessarily identical, but something that's complimentary. And uh, as crazy as that sounds, that's just what I would like. Anyway, when it came up that Myla needed a foster home, I jumped on it because she's black and white and she's beautiful and she's female. But once again, you know, when I drove, it was a seven or eight hour round trip to pick up Myla as well. And when I drove to pick her up to foster her, um, you know, I said, I'm just gonna come and meet her and I'm not 100% sure I'll bring her back. You know, it really needs to be a good match. At any rate, when I first met her, you know, I thought, mm, I didn't feel anything, but that's me. 
I'm not really a dog person. But about the time I'd had her for a good month, I really started getting attached to her. And that's a first. She's actually the first foster I've gotten attached to at all. So anyway, that's the story of you know how I came to love Danes. I just met one one day and fell madly in love with the breed. I don't know what it is about them that really attracts me or draws me, but they are so gentle and so big and just so everything. And then of course, you know, my two years with Slim as of April, and it has been the most incredible experience of my life. I really understand dog love now like never before. Just to say, I'm still not necessarily a dog person or an animal person or what have you. I don't have one of these big animal hearts, and I know some people do, and I really admire that. But I just fell in love with a specific breed and then really bonded with Slim. You know what's funny though is that sometimes people come into my house now and I can tell that they're kind of put off, you know, especially with two large dogs in the house, but even just with Slim there. And it's funny because it reminds me of how I used to be before I got Slim.